What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. Now a nice little fun project for you today. So you know that I've built this resin table so I'm getting ready to put it into my house but I'm going to have to make some coasters for it. I want to make some custom made coasters. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to do a little bit more resin work. I'm going to take the bark that I took off the live edge slab. I'm going to put this into some coasters with some of the copper um, resin and then some clear resin on top. So this is going to be a bit of an experiment. I wouldn't normally recommend you use resin with bark just because bark can be so flaky, but we've cleaned up a bit of it now. I'll show you the coasters that we're going to make. We get it into the mold. It's going to be a two stage pour and hopefully we'll end up with some really cool custom looking coasters. So let's get on it and do it. Right guys, so I have the bark prepared. So I just took some of the bark, took a wire brush to it, scrubbed it up, then I cut it into 80 millimeter lengths, or just about three inch lengths. Then I split all those lengths in half, just putting a little wavy pattern into them. So my coasters will be 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, or just about three inch by three inch, which should be uh, good for anything that we need to put on it, mug or glass that should cover it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these, put them in the mold, we're going to pour the copper resin for so we're going to have little bark river um, coasters. So we pour the copper into the center of this, let that set up, and once that's set up then we're going to pour clear resin over the top of this. So we're going to coat, um, completely coat these little bark coasters in clear resin. So they'll complete, be completely encased in clear resin. Now they'll be on the, a little on the thick side for coasters, but they should work. If we keep them flat, everything should be good. It's, this is a real experiment now, so I'm not sure if this is even going to work. We're going to crack on. We have the mold built. I'll take you over and show that now. And then we'll get ready. We'll mix up a bit of the copper resin and we'll get ready to pour this into the mold. Let's do it. Okay, so we have the mold built. Now hopefully you can see where I have you set up. The sun keeps going in and out, so it's kind of getting hard to get the uh, exposure right on the camera, but we have the mold built. Now I already built the mold in the complete series of the resin table build, so I didn't go into it again. I don't want to bore you guys by going over the same thing, but suffice to say, it's made from polypropylene sheet. I've made it on top of the sheet. I've used some hot glue to put everything together, and then just some painter's caulk around the outside to seal it up. Now these blocks are just covered in the mold release tape so I'll be using these to hold down the bark because the bark is very very light and it will float on top of the resin so just in order to keep the bark slightly pressed into the resin I'm going to uh, use some of these blocks. So let's get mixing up our resin now and get ready to put our blocks or our bark into our little sections here. Let's do it. Okay, let's get mixing up some of this resin then. So we're going to use the glass cast product again. This is glass cast tree. This is our surfacing resin. This is a clear surfacing epoxy. So it mixes uh, 100 to 50 or 2 to 1 by weight. So we're going to get some into this. I'm not quite sure the exact amount I'm going to mix. I'm just going to eyeball this. So uh, yeah, it's nice and easy to mix up. Just make sure that it's well mixed with the hardener. Mix and mix and mix and mix some more. So we get this in. And then we're going to put the metallic copper powder pigment into this and some of the um, solid polished copper as well. About 140 grams of this. Putting in hopefully this will be enough. And then about 70 grams of the hardener. There we go. Perfect. And this will just be for our base pour. Okay let's get some of the solid pigment colour in. That should be plenty. And now some of the powder. Now I want this to be dark, so I'm going to use a nice little bit of powder here. That should be plenty for that amount of um, resin. So let's get the mixer, which is right here, and start mixing this up. You guys will have seen me, if you have watched my resin table build, you'd have seen me do this exact mix and this um, get this exact effect before. So again, it's just a mixture of the two. Hopefully the camera is picking that up. You get that lovely polished copper coming through the uh, metallic copper powder, which is a lot darker. And you get this beautiful effect. So I'm gonna mix this now for about 10 minutes and then mix it some more. And as soon as it's all mixed up, I will get back to you guys. Okay guys, I've mixed that for a good 10 minutes and then I've let it set for 10 minutes and this glass cast product is great at getting rid of its own bubbles. You can see all the bubbles have come to the surface now. So all you gotta do is just take either a torch or a heat gun and just flash off them bubbles. 
you will get more bubbles as you pour. But like I say, this is great at getting rid of the air bubbles and you can just flash it off with a heat gun, just like that. Now let's get this into the mold. Right, let's get this into the mold. Now, I have my little pieces of bark set up here and each of these is a pair, so they go together, so they've been split from the same piece with a nice little pattern, wavy pattern in it. And they're all different, so they all go together. Now, I'm just gonna fill the bottom of the mold with some of this resin, just check for any leaks. And uh, then we can seal it up with the painter's caulk. Painter's caulk is great to have on standby because silicone won't reseal your mold, neither will the hot glue, but the painter's caulk will. So what I'm gonna do then is just pour it in. I haven't sealed between the molds because if the resin flows between the molds, I don't mind, it'll self-level, that's fine. I've just sealed the outside of the mold. So we'll get some into the base now and then we will drop our um, bark pieces on top of the resin. Right, so our mold is filled up now at the bottom and we've no leaks, so everything is good to go. So I'm just gonna drop in our little pieces of bark now. So I'm just gonna lay them in. Again, I'm not going for perfection here. This, these don't have to be perfectly squared. It doesn't have to be perfectly neat. They're gonna be like little live edge river coasters. So I'm just gonna sit them in to the resin. Just drop them in. Just like that. And these should look pretty cool when they're done. Try and drop them in as flat as I possibly can. Always good to have some tissue on standby as well. There we go, just like that. Right guys, I'm just gonna leave them set up there now like that, so uh, it should be good. Now you can see the way the pigment settles, you'll have to come back and mix it if you want that really nice swirly pattern, so that's what I'll do. So exactly like I do with the coffee table, I'll put those swirls into the little rivers in the center of these, and uh, with them, when this sets, gets to what they call the B stage, which is where it's just tacky to touch, but it won't actually stick to your finger, then that's the next time to pour in the next bit of resin. So it's very, very hot in this shed today, and I've poured this a little bit deeper than the surface resin should be poured. I don't think it's gonna heat up too much, but I might just turn on the fan anyway, just to keep it all cool. But it's only me being just overly precautious. But uh, yeah, that should be good. It's a bit of an experiment, so if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out, but it might work out, and it might look cool, and we might have some nice coasters for the coffee table. So let's leave that set up now, and then we'll get back and we'll put our clear resin on. Okay guys, the resin has set up. It's tacky to touch now, but it doesn't stick to your finger. So that's how you know you're at the right stage to the next pour. So I've just mixed up about 400 grams now of um, just pure clear resin. I'm gonna pour that over the top and then we leave this overnight. So let's get this into the mold. So I'm just gonna get this in until it covers all of the bark. Okay, that's all them completely covered up. So just let that settle, all the bubbles rise out at now. I keep flashing off the bubbles, keep watching for bubbles, just check it over the next few hours and we should be good to go. So there we go, I'm gonna let this overnight now and I'll get the bubbles out of here. So when you guys see it, it should be ready to come out of the mold next. Okay guys, it is the following day and I've just broken them out of the mold and things could have gone a little better, I'll be honest with you, but it's a bit of an experiment, so I'm not too pushed, but um, I should have painted the resin onto the bark first. I knew I was going to get air bubbles, but I was just experimenting and I got a lot of air bubbles and I also went away for about an hour. So you need to keep coming back and flashing off those bubbles. Because what happens with the resin is it sets up and once it sets up, it goes hard almost immediately. So you can see a point where it just transitions from being soft to just super hard. So I went to flash off these bubbles and you can see the ripples in the top of this, that's where the heat gun actually blew the resin, caused it to ripple, and then it just went hard. And it literally, it literally just solidifies in a few seconds. So you can see the bubbles are trapped in a couple of these, and I have a couple of wavy surfaces on them. So uh, yeah, we're gonna try and rescue now. 
victory from the jaws of defeat here. Um, I might run these through the bandsaw and cut them down. So I want to cut them down by about half the thickness that they are because they're a bit too thick for coasters and see what happens when we sand this up. So let's do that and see if we can uh, actually end up with something that's nice. Okay, so I want to take about five millimeters off this and I'm going to use the worst affected one. Um, so if I lose this, it's not such a big deal. Again, it's all an experiment. So I'm going to run through the band, so I'll take about five mil off it and see what we're left with. Now I'm going to cut into some of the timber and this, some of the bark, because the bark is so wavy that uh, some of it is actually going to poke through, but we'll see what we're left with. We might have a nice piece, let's see. Okay, so that's what we're left with. Now, this could be interesting. I'm gonna sand this and polish it up and see what we're left with. So we have the nice, maybe some wood effect here. Then we'll have a polished resin and then we'll have the copper in the center. So it actually might be quite nice. So let's continue on, let's cut all the rest of them. Okay, so here's our six coasters cut. Now I just wanted to show you something. So that, that's how much I cut off the top. Well, look at this for an interesting little effect. So you can see how that some of the bark now is encased in the top. Um, it's a nice little idea if you wanted to catch something like this inside in some clear resin. Now, if you polished the back of this, it would be super see-through. So it would be nice and shiny, the same as the top is. And you'd have some bark specimen captured in there. Could be an interesting effect to make some coasters with. So just an idea. If you wanted to pour clear resin over something, then send it through your bandsaw and just capture the top of it in the clear block at the top. You get quite a cool effect. Now, obviously I didn't set up to do that here, but uh, yeah, that could be interesting if you put some thought into it. So there we go, a little happy accident. Right guys, we're sanded up to 320 grit, and from here I have to move to the wet dry sandpaper to sand by hand, so I won't have as much, I won't have a vacuum on it, so I wanna get some at, um, sanding sealer into this bark now at this stage. It actually turned out to be quite nice looking. Um, I'm really happy with it. It's kind of a happy accident, so I'm not gonna claim I started out to design them this way, but I think this is gonna look way better than what I originally had in mind. So sometimes uh, it's good to persevere, even when you feel like you've made a mistake, because sometimes your mistakes actually work out better than what you originally designed. Now I just put down some double-sided sticky tape and stuck them to this board just to make it easier to uh, sand. So you can't hold these because the sanding disc is bigger and it would just shred your fingers. And if you put them in the voice, they tend to fold and bend. So we don't want that, we want to keep them nice and flat. So that's just a little tip. So I just have some of the sanding sealer now. This contains shellac. This stuff goes off really, really quickly. So I'm going to get some of this into the top and um, let it soak into the bark and then we'll start hand sanding. Okay, let's get some of this on. Again, I just want to let this soak into the wood and uh, protect that bark. Obviously that bark will continue to rot, so the sanding sealer will just help it stabilize. So there we go, we let that go off. That should dry up pretty quick. That stuff goes uh, tacky and hard fairly fast. We give it about a half an hour and we should be good to start sanding again. Then we can get this thing polished up. And hopefully then our polish that I'm going to use, which is the bowl polish, won't go into the timber. At least that's the plan. Okay guys, I sanded them up and polished them up and that's as much as I'm going to do on them. I'm not going to get a super uh, see-through glossy finish on these. After all, they're just coasters and we don't have to go as, to as much effort as we did with the tabletop. So a bit of Danish oil on top of this now. Let that uh, go off, then we'll hit it with a bit of the Carnuba wax furniture polish and uh, yeah, these should be good to go. There we go. Okay guys, there we go. A nice little simple resin project for you. Now these didn't end up how I first envisaged, but uh, I think we pulled it out of the jaws of the feet and we have some quite interesting looking coasters to go with this oak resin table. And it's nice the fact that the bark actually came off this oak slab. So they're a nice little talking point and some are more importantly for me to put my beer. So I'm gonna take this into the house tonight now. I'm gonna have a few beers and I'm gonna test out my coasters. 
These ones are quite interesting, the little see-through ones. It's a nice little effect. Again, I didn't put much work into them. I didn't intend to end up with that. But uh, yeah, it has given me a few ideas of things that you could do with resin, um, encapsulating things in resin. The bark looks quite nice with the clear glass behind it. It brightens it up a small bit. It would actually be lovely to use some of the oak and make coasters out of that too. It would lighten up the coasters a small bit, maybe a different color resin for a bit of contrast. There's loads of ideas. Again, this video is just to give you guys some ideas, a bit of inspiration. Maybe you want to do some resin work, you don't want to take on a big project like this. Maybe build a few coasters. It's a great way to start, a great way to get into resin. It's nice and simple and easy to do. And uh, if it goes wrong, it's not really a big deal. There are only a few coasters at the end of the day and it's only a small bit of resin. So there we go, some nice interesting coasters to go with the oak coffee table. Again, guys, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, comments and questions below, share if that would help me out a lot. And uh, yeah, I shall see you in the next one. I'm gonna have a few beers now, take it easy.